Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. You didn't even wait for me to say hi. I'm Steve, and then go hi, Steve. <laughs> uh, not rude. Ah, uh, this season. This season. Mm. Reverend Linda and I. We don't usually correspond on what I'm going to play, but we did this time, this week. Yeah, it's that, that right shoulder. It's like, you got to get some control. <laughs> you got to get right. some control. Uh, if I could be you, and you could be me, for just one hour, oh, oh, if we could find a way, to get inside each other's mind If you could see you through your eyes Instead of your ego I believe you'd be surprised to see What you would find Walk a mile in my shoes Walk a mile in my shoes Hey, before you abuse, criticize and accuse Walk a mile in my shoes Now your whole world you see around you Is just a reflection mm -hmm. And the law karma says you're gonna reap just what you show So unless you live your life Your life of total perfection You better be careful Of every stone that you throw And yet we spend the days Throwing stones at one another I don't think I wear my hair the way you do Well, I may be common people But I'm your brother Bless you <laughs> And when you strike out Try to hurt me, it's a hurting you Walk a mile in my shoes Walk a mile in my shoes Hey, before you abuse, criticize and accuse Walk a mile in my shoes Now walk a mile in my shoes Walk a mile in my shoes Hey, before you abuse, criticize and accuse Walk a mile in my shoes Walk a mile in my shoes Hey, before you abuse Criticize and accuse Walk a mile in my shoes Hey! Wow! Super duper beginning Super duper Hey! I don't know. I got stuff. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, friends from far, far away and far long ago, but here we are now. We, we look a little different, but here we are now, um, having been reborn about a million times, um, day after day, entering into the process of this week that we are living called Holy Week. We welcome those of you online. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. Whenever you watch this, know that we are with you. Our community of love, which is quite large this morning, um, is embracing you and holding you forever in your highest good. 
So good morning to those of you online and to those of you here in this sanctuary. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. We're so grateful for your presence. For those of you who are volunteering, creating things this morning, thank you for your service. It's what allows everything to work. He works for money, but, um, you know, we, 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 we stretch. He works, uh, he works hard for the money. Yeah, that's him. This is our dear friend, Steve Mason. If he captivates you in the way he does us, yeah. He has CDs. I don't know if we've got any on hand, but um, they're in the back. They're in the back by the coffee pot. Yeah, go there. Buy Steve's CDs. What a great thing to do. So when we say good morning to you in the warm and loving spirit of unity, we mean it. We greet you in the warm and loving spirit of unity. When we gather as community, we strengthen not just our bond as a community, and students of truth, we strengthen our awareness. Something happens in us when we get ourselves into a place to be receptive, to be in a listening state, to be receptive to the work of spirit in each of our lives, uniquely and wondrously, but no less present and always active. And so in community, we remind ourselves we remind ourselves of what works. We remind ourselves of our path and our growth and our learning. And on this Palm Sunday, we remind ourselves of all the Sundays that honor this particular week that we've experienced down through the years. Maybe at one point in time you were in a very evangelical church, or maybe you were in a Catholic environment, or maybe you were in some other tradition that was a learning experience for you, a way in which your faith was manifesting in that period of time. The story is always the same. The way it's presented if we're on a growth path, always looks a little different. Because the question for us is, how does it apply to my life? How does this apply to our lives? How does this apply to our collective experience of living? And so on this Palm Sunday morning, we greet you in that realization that no matter what path we've walked, no matter where we've come from, no matter what we bring into this moment in time, we are that which has been created and brought forth through all time to this particular moment in time to realize our divine nature, our Christhood, the truth of our own being. And from that we gain strength and guidance and clarity and support for our personal journeys. With a deep breath, letting go of all those things that it took for you to be here. Letting them fall away. We recognize once again, there is but one presence and one power active in your life and mine, God the good, all power, God the good, all wisdom, God the good, everywhere present love. I open myself to a new realization this morning and I give thanks for the glory and wonder of this day. And so it is. Miss Valerie has our daily word for us this morning. I jumped right into that, didn't I? Well, I'm not jumping. I, I see no jumping, but I see, 
but I see a brand new knee. Look at that girl go. We are the halt, we are the lame, we are the recovering here. Good job. Thank you. Nice to see you. It's true, I have not one but two new knees. The left knee, uh, <laughs> full replacement in mid-October, the right knee, little over two months ago. And yesterday I was bicycling. So, yeah, yeah. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Prayer and a great surgeon and Reiki are all, they all work. They work really well. Today is Palm Sunday, and our daily word focuses on, okay, let's see. Speaking of focusing, let's put this here. <clears throat> I celebrate my awareness of the divine presence alive in me, and in you, and in you, and in you. Just as an enthusiastic crowd welcomed Jesus in Jerusalem with a spirit of great enthusiastic celebration, I commemorate Palm Sunday by opening my heart and mind to the divinity that is within me and within all others I meet today and every day. This welcoming attitude changes me at depth making the commitment to behold the Christ in myself and in each person I meet is my way of symbolically placing palm branches before them, greeting them as I would Jesus. This celebration of the divine in each person lays a path to spiritual freedom. From perfect peace within, I shout Hosanna my, as my jubilant soul celebrates. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. John 12, 13. Hosanna. Bless him. Hosanna. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and where are those palm branches? Yeah. In Palm Thanks. Springs. In Palm Springs, yes, of no, course. Right, there. right here? I'm a, this this ah. there, they are. there they are. Thank you, whoever does flowers for us this day. Each Sunday we honor the person who brings us beauty. Thank you so much. I have so many announcements. I'm just going to touch them and move on. Tuesday morning at Ted and Dee's house, there's a big deal going on. It's Easter hat decorating party. And um, it will be so fun. And more than fun, it will be a real celebration. Yes, Dee? Uh, okay. 16 of you coordinate your schedules. <laughs> From one until four, not all at once. <laughs> Um, however you show up, it'll be a wonderful experience. So D and Ted's home, I have the address here. I assume there's more information somewhere else. Can you move down one, Miss Beth? We've got two in front, two in the front, down front. No, don't be sorry. No sorries here. After church this morning, we have an organizing meeting of the individuals who are interested in learning more about our Adventures in Prosperity treasure hunt. We have spoken about this before. Cleo is our lead person. The organizing meeting will be today after the service at 12.30. If you're interested in 12.30? Yeah. Per yeah. Okay, brief meeting. The hunt for donation treasures is on now. Um, we collect auction uh, treasures for online auctioning, which will be an extraordinary prosperity gift to the ministry. Affirmative prayer workshop with Reverend Deidre 
on Tuesdays, April 18 through May 9 at 11 a.m. I assume there is a flyer for this somewhere, as there is a flyer for Adventures in Prosperity Treasure Hunt. Unity Skagit Valley invites you to a drumming circle with Lena. Drumming circle, 6 o'clock to 7.30, the first Wednesday of every month. That would be the day after tomorrow. Reverend Lena, drum. If you have a drum, bring one. I assume she has drums to share. Yes. All right, Gail, you had something quick for us? Yeah, great. The spare machine that uses pods. Okay. I will get the decaf pods and we will okay. also have decaf. Okay, dokie. Okay. I know somebody else. Nobody else. Thank you. We used to do hot water, um, and uh, we can bring in a, a jar of Nescafe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever. If you have traveled to far, far away places, <laughs> you have experienced times of uh, Nescafe. Um, who loves it? Oh, Norma Jean, you would love it. Yeah, that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got some at home. Um, yeah, well, whatever. But if you want decaf coffee, see Gail. She'll take care of that for you. Which is perfect. Didn't somebody else say to me they want a Beth said she'd like a minute. Come here. I don't have one. Well, I've got this one, but. It's in the corner. Just speak up. Just speak up. We're getting it. We're getting it. It's coming. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm hoping you all know, but if you don't, listen up. We're initiating a new Wednesday evening opportunity to come and raise your consciousness. So the first one is always going to be Lena's drumming circle, which is phenomenal. It, and it is a ritual, but the first time she's going to ask you all what you want. All right. Uh, going past that quickly, on the 19th, we have Michael Warmoth and Judy Flores here for just a month. Yay. Yay. And so we've invited Michael to present on the 19th of April. And I forgot the flyer, so I don't remember the talk title or the time, but um, <laughs> more information will come. And every week, you should come. every week you should find in your flyer an announcement of that Wednesday's event. Great. No, thank oh. you. If you have a prayer request, we invite you to submit it online, if you wish, info at unitysv.org. If you're in the room, you have a prayer request, be it big or small, we have a very active prayer team, and they, um, they really are dedicated to the work of prayer and holding you and, and any need that presents itself that we know about. Uh, in prayer. Um, if you're in the sanctuary, the prayer box is that little brown box, don't look, uh, over on the credenza, and prayer slips are available there. If it's your first Sunday, or if you are not on our email list, um, please sign uh, whatever form you can find that gives us your name, uh, a phone number, an email address. Thank you for keeping us current uh, about that. Is there anything else for the good of the whole? No, Jerry says I've covered it. Hallelujah! So this is my first day without the sling. Yes. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Not necessarily because I have permission, but tomorrow <laughs> I have a doctor's visit and he'll evaluate and um, I'm sure he'll say it's fine that I drove to church this morning and that I don't have my sling on. Um, um, it's a miracle, Valerie. Uh, our bodies are a miracle. How uh, prayer works, but life works. 
the, the basic life force energy of our beings. Um, the creative, we call it divine, but the constancy of creative divine energy is always at work in the wisdom and the workings of our lives. And that includes our bodies. It is a miracle that they could replace a shoulder. And in six weeks, um, it's, a, it's a functional unit again, um, not fully, but it's on its way um, to doing what it knows to do. Life knows how to create and bring forth our wholeness. Life knows how to bring forth for us in the experience of our living. The right elements, the right, the right ingredients, the right yeasting to bring us into the fullness of just exactly what we need. Maybe not in the time we think, maybe not in keeping with the control mechanisms we've employed, but in that divine right order. So I give thanks for all of us being centered constantly in that presence. And when I pray, I hold you in that awareness. Divine right order is at work in you. If you ask me for prayer, I never question that divine right order is absent. I always affirm and know that I may not understand the path, but I understand the presence. And the presence supports us wherever we find ourselves. In that realization, I find the power of prayer manifesting in so many different ways that I could never imagine or dream. And on this day, on this Palm Sunday day, I hold that to be true. As we prepare for meditation, I want to uh, share this with you. When I was a boy, I used to love to hike into the country. Sometimes I walked too far and overjudged the distance. I had to go. I had to go. On this occasion, night had fallen while I was still far from home. By the time I reached the bridge that led into town, fog had come down with the dark, and now I stood before the bridge. It was a long vehicular bridge across a river with a catwalk for pedestrians at the side. I hesitated. Far below me, I know there was the water that I could not see. And before me, I knew there stretched the bridge, but now it was swallowed up in the foggy night. Under my feet, the iron grill I strode on was invisible. The railing that I clutched disappeared in front of my hand. I was frightened, but it was damp and it was cold, and I was hungry and tired. If I wanted to get home that night, I had to cross that bridge. Gingerly, I inched my foot forward and shuffling, step by step, sliding my hand along the rail, hardly daring to let go, even to take a new grip. I walked out into the blackness of space. On nothing I had faith was there. And I crossed that river. It was many years later that I realized that this is what we do all our life. It's not the street that bears us up as we walk. It is faith. Without faith, who can stand, let alone walk? With faith, what road do we not dare to take? Having faith, one walked on water. Having faith, some walk on air 
and circumnavigate the heavens. Every step we take is a venture in uncertainty. But when we step on faith, we step as on a rock of reassurance. We walk as if God had us by the hand, and our life is a journey into jubilance. And so I say to you, walk on faith. That peace, I, I walked out into the blackness of space on the nothing I had faith was there. That, that reach into the unknown where we are literally identifying that there is that which will carry us through. That's the message of Palm Sunday. That's the real message of Palm Sunday. We believe somehow that he was beyond any kind of need to reassure himself on that Sunday. He didn't draw strength from the crowd. He drew strength from within. As we move through our service this morning, I just want to keep coming back to the realization that his power didn't come from acknowledgement or assurance. His power came from within. The only place we ever find it in our own heart, in our own center, in the reality of our own being. We have a song. It's a beautiful song. It's from, it says Psalm 84. Five. Psalm 84. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can sing along. This is this song is such a it feels like a mantra. It's called In My Heart Is the Road, right? And so that's the first line and it comes up a few times in my heart is the road and I will not be hurried. In my heart is the road, bless my feet on the journey. Okay. In my heart is the road. And I will not be hurried In my heart is the road Bless my feet on the journey To Jerusalem To Jerusalem To Jerusalem To Jerusalem in my heart is the road And I will not be hurried In my heart is the road Bless my feet on the journey To Jerusalem To Jerusalem to Jerusalem, to Jerusalem. In my heart is the road, and, and I, I will, will not, not be hurried. hurried. In my heart is the road Bless my feet on the journey To Jerusalem To Jerusalem To Jerusalem To Jerusalem my heart is the road and I will not be hurried in 
my heart is the road bless my feet on the journey to Jerusalem to Jerusalem to Jerusalem to Jerusalem In my heart is the road. As we breathe together and allow center to draw us in, allow the very center of your being to call you in, to draw you in. The center of your being like a magnet drawing you from all the all the bits and pieces and and expressions and experiences and whatever's of your life allow your center to draw you back into the awareness of wholeness and your breath moving deep and more deeply into the center into the sanctuary into the holiness of your own being The center, the center of you is greater than anything you can imagine. That which is greater than a vision, that which is greater than a dream. that which is greater than what we call reality. Constantly infusing and permeating all aspects of you and your life and the step you're taking now center of you, the constancy of the living forth of the very presence we call God by any name, love, peace. life clarity power the ability to let go and move forward step by step The ability to more deeply discern the right action for your life for the highest good. All of this and faith within you, centered within you, 
is the very process of faith. I may not know the way, but I know Spirit knows the way. I may not have the answer, but I know the living presence within me that is present everywhere I step knows the way. And so I follow. And I pray, show me, show me the way. I pray as I open myself I inwardly invite the power within me to reveal for me the way of my heart leading me into ever higher and higher planes of good. The one who walked before gave us the assurance that we would never be alone and that no matter how treacherous the journey might seem, the way through is always revealing itself. And so today I make an agreement inwardly to let go, to more clearly, more truly allow spirit to be my guide. with your breath, with that deepening of your breath. Spend a moment in stillness. in the ways and through the days. Not a moment has come to pass that was not filled with the presence of divine light. That light has carried you, has guided you, that you might meet this moment and move forward into the next phase of your promise. For all that has been, to all that is yet to be, loving spirit, we say yes. We ride on the promise of your ever-present blessing and we give thanks. In all ways we give thanks. And so it is. Amen. So Reverend Linda asked me what I would play at this point. And I told her with all the sage wisdom I had, I don't know. <laughs> it's so great to see all of you here and 
Does it feel like an all of us thing now? It's really, really nice, huh? <sighs> there are times we feel downhearted when we'd swear we walk alone. Still we search for any sign that we might find our pathway home Now there's something oh so lovely like a star in a crystal night When I'm reminded deepest darkness can be lit with just one candle's light and There's a circle We're a part of Hand in hand It glows with love In this circle There's strength in numbers As we With the help of sisters and brothers And some friends I have yet to know They give me strength to face the future They lift me up so I'm never alone And there's a circle we're a part of and in hand it glows with love In this circle the strength in numbers As we rise to lift each other up Every breath, every step, every heartbeat There's a circle we're a part of As we rise to lift each other up Come the morning, bright and cleansing It's gonna warm from the outside in But nothing shines so Oh, so brightly as the light that shines from within. There's a circle we're a part of, and in hand it goes with love. In this circle, there's strength in numbers as we as we rise to lift each other up we rise Neither of the things you Here's talked about. No, there you go. Welcome to the work of spirit, huh? Okay. Let's do this thing. So, here we are. Asking the question once again, 
What have I learned? How have I grown? What have I let go? What have I bound myself to? What is it that I've forgiven? Mm, and where have I betrayed? And where have I stood for something in me that stands strong in the truth? And where have I turned away from that in the other direction? What other direction, we ask? Well, that which is uh, an alternative, if you will, to continuing to, to um, hold something that means something to us that has value. This story wasn't lived for the glory of one. This story was lived as the taking down of the wall in consciousness that prevents us from acknowledging that we too reside in and have residing within us the same power, the same possibility, the same love, the same ceaseless force of life ever unfolding possibility in our midst. The story wasn't meant to be contained in a book, but brought into a state of realization for our own lives. And we've done that, and we've, and we've done our best with that. We say, I, I do my best to live in keeping with this awareness. It's, it's, um, it's what I aspire to. It's what I hunger for, to live more freely, to live more expansively, to live more if you want that word, faithfully, devoted to the things that matter, really matter. Because the whole, the whole uh, of, the, of the testament, uh, whichever one you read, is, is a testament to you can have a life beyond your imagination if you will turn toward this power within you and within your life. It wasn't, it wasn't Jesus making a point that would be anything other than the same point he made in all of his teachings. And we who are followers of what we call the truth unity students and, and others who believe that the power doesn't live somewhere far, far away in a state assigned to one person and one being glorified or one soul being magnified. But we believe that that same power is present for anyone who wants it. Not just because Jesus did it, but because it was always so. What made the difference was he comprehended it, he apprehended it. He, he came to realization of that through his own being. He didn't have to do this Palm Sunday thing. It didn't even, it wasn't even really the point of the exercise. He knew the same people who were throwing down palm leaves and shouting Hosanna would in the very near future turn away from him and stand as a crowd saying crucify him. That life is always lived in this experience of, of, um, of a relationship with life that seems dualistic but in fact is at one in unity, in harmony, 
and into all the phases of being. And so as he walked through the experience of this time and in and through what we call Easter, even if it didn't happen, is a testimony to the potential and the power within our own being. And so as he enters Jerusalem that day, and there seems to be a crowd, we don't know how many people, something was always going on in Jerusalem in the time of Passover. There was always a party. There was always a new, um, a new way shower, a new teacher, a new something. It was a place of happening. And people who wanted to get their message out showed up in Jerusalem in no better time than Passover. Why? Because everybody was there. Everybody went up, it said, to Jerusalem. But the message goes uh, into a place in us, not because it, it was his message. It goes into a place in us that awakens us. It begins to stimulate in us something more than the old teaching of our worm of the dustness. Uh, Something penetrates when we start to see it from a different perspective, um, that we're not sinful cast outs from the garden, that we're not somehow uh, uh, something that has to be Uh, rescued from its limited state. The message came from, from a seeing, a seeing that those ideas that were so prevalent that had been a part of of all time that we were separate from our source that we were separate from our good separate from the power separate from the integrity of our oneness the 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 teachings that cast us down again and again and again he said somebody's got to tell the truth about this Somebody needs to step forward and not just tell the truth, but show the truth and then walk through the experience of letting go of all of that, which is the falsity of how we've lived and believed and perceived ourselves. And so that's the story of the week. And to walk into it was to take the great risk, to let go of friends, to let go of life, to let go of the road, to let go of all the all the things that had ever been present before. Just to just it was a point of demarcation. I'm going I'm going all the way. I'm going to take this all the way. And we have had many teachers on the planet down through time who have gone all the way. Did they ascend? Well, they ascended in consciousness. We're told actually that when any one of us rises above our own state of belief in our limitation, rather than our belief in the infinite power that moves in and through us. That when any one of us rises or moves through into that state of awareness, we're all raised up. So on this day, we, here we are. So imagine it's your journey. And imagine that you've got all the choreography in place. Hmm? You've got all your plans made. You've got the choreography in place. You know what you're going for. You know what you're going to do. When you get there, you know what the purpose is. And you know what's beyond this moment in time. And yeah, you had the disciples gather a group of folks. They, they, uh, they said, you know, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. She's coming, she's coming, she's coming, she's coming. 
You've got all the, you've got all the stuff at work there. And it looks really glorious. And the next instant, uh, biblically, it, there's not even a pause between. He goes to the temple. Do you remember that? He goes to the temple. What is it? What does he go to the temple? Well, I don't think he went to turn tables necessarily as a part of his plan. I think he was looking for something of the heart, something of the spirit, something of the of the soul present there. But he knew he knew that that politics within the system and the whole political structure of uh, of what was going on at that point in time wasn't wasn't spirit based as such not consciously spirit based as such it was all driven by all these distractions and all the things the you know the pigeon sellers and the and the money changers and the whatever 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 i think okay here we are we're going to walk into um, into a, a new state. So today, at the end of the service, or next Sunday, or whenever we sing, "I am new today," um, and then we walk out, right? Hosanna in the highest! I am new today. I am new this moment. Uh, I have risen up. Christ the Lord is risen today. And then we are immediately in that state of mind again where all of these distractions are present and I become the temple one more time. I become the temple, this structure of thought, this structure of ideation, this structure of belief, this structure of limitation, restriction, upheaval, chaos, worry. I, if, if I really look at, this, at the story, I say, oh, oh, I'm the temple. That moment when I move from a state of, of being receptive and awake and in the power of the realization of, of the music and the glory and he's risen and whatever else, all of a sudden... Uh, shortly thereafter, we find ourselves in that state of being not the money changer in the temple, but the money worrier in the temple. The, you know, here let's uh, <laughs> here let's sell a few pigeons. Here let's let's get in the mix of things and and the the magic of the story or the majesty of the story is found in that moment when he says i will tolerate this no longer here's the majesty yes of course we go from that state of palm fronds and hosanna into the temple again with a choice at hand, illustrated by not just the story, but the experiences we've had before, which is, of course I have to turn that over. Of course I have to turn that around. Of course I have to disrupt that state that is so familiar to me and so old and so limiting and so filled with all these ideas that are born out of cosmic, not cosmic, but more racial consciousness, that consciousness of the norm. We have, to, we have to turn the table upside down. You've got to get in and say, this doesn't work. I can't find my heart. I can't think here. I can't see the movement of spirit in the midst of all this chaos. I'm here not to perpetuate that state of mind. I'm here to overturn it when I see it and to turn it around 
is that moment when I take hold of my own, my own awareness directed toward my own divine, conscious, infinite awareness and take the risk once again to trust, to move into that state that we call faith. It, I, if you stay in that state of mind, nothing changes. And we ask the question once again, how, what have you learned? How have you grown? And we come back to the realization that every time we turn over the tables and the chase out the money changers in our own minds, we gain a kind of freedom that allows us to have a deeper realization of what's really going on, of what's really present. And he leaves there and rests for the evening. And the next morning starts again another piece of the journey and we come to the fig tree. All these stories teach the same lessons. It's a fig tree. How many fig trees do you think are in Israel? How many fig trees do you think are in Jerusalem? On that morning, there's a fig tree that should be sustenance, nourishment, that infilling. Should, should be able to get a little something there. And it's barren. And it looks like he takes really harsh action. This tree will never bear fruit again, he said. And by the next day, it's withered. It's a state of mind again. The journey is always repetition of this same state of mind. No matter how you tell the story, no matter where you enter into it, no matter which piece of it you're, you're really digesting at any given time, it's always the same story. And the story is that state of mind, what you're looking for in what we call false reality to nourish you, hasn't, doesn't, and won't. And he said, get it out. Get rid of believing that your source is what the world will be for you. Because there is only that which spirit can be for you. Moving through the world, moving in the world, being our resource base but requiring that if we're going to stay in a non-fertile state, a non-fertile state, but it, there's no nourishment in that. You can't continue to deny your good and believe that it's going to nourish your spirit, your soul, your body, your life, or anything else. You can't live in a state of the absence of awareness and believe that the world is going to measure up to be what you need most and long for most deeply. Over and over and over again, fish, coins in fish's mouths, the belief structure, the where you are, the what you think, what you're holding most dearly, as your state of conscious, constant consciousness that doesn't nourish you. We just keep reaching for more of it. I, don't, I can't get any food off this tree. I'll just keep trying. I can't get any satisfaction out of this state of being that I'm in. I'll just keep trying. I'll just keep digging that hole a little deeper. He said, give it up quickly. Give it up quickly. Don't wait. Give it up quickly. Take the big risk and move into that state of realization that, yes, there, there's work to do 
find another tree. <laughs> find a tree that's got fruit in it. Stop believing there's only one tree. Stop believing there's only one, one stream. The universe is filled with the infinite flow. And the story goes on through the week. And it's always, I've, I've, I've looked, I, I, did, I did my work. Every single story, every single parable, every single telling is the illustration of a shift. And where does that shift occur? In the mind, in the heart, and in my perception over and over and over again. Healing occurs. How? Your faith has made you well. What is that? It's a shift. It's a shift in where all of this magnified energy that's moving in and through us is flowing in our lives. And so the rest of the week is harsh. The story of Holy Week for me is um, it, it's uh, deep and it, it never loses its power for me. And I'm not going to say that the resurrection is the like deliverance above and beyond all. It's every step that leads up to that. Not just tomb time. It's all the other things that shifted, that were released, that, that moved you into a state of consciousness where you look at something and you say, I'm not the same anymore. And this is not the same anymore. Somebody, when I was at convention last year, gave me um, this, just put it in my hand. He said, I think we all need one of these. It's a, it's a dice, a die. Dice? What's a single dice? A die. I knew, I knew somebody <laughs> knew that. Any way you turn it, it says God. He said, just keep rolling it. Just keep rolling the dice. Just keep rolling the dice. It'll always tell you the truth. I think so. I think so. I've been at this um, for my friends. 46 years, moving into 47. I don't always practice great discipline. I mean, we could, I can point that out for you, but, um, <coughs> but I never for whatever reason, even when it's really dark and even when I'm really resistant and even when I'm really defiant, I still always know there's only one solution and it's always this. There's only one solution and it's always this. I could turn away I can go the other direction, and it's still there every time I come back to the realism of the truth. And so it is, I think, for us all. May we be gentle with ourselves. May we be heartfully in the embrace of our own divine nature. How about we take a breath? We appreciate you so much, those of you who are present here, those of you who are present online. We appreciate you so much. Your presence, your generosity, the way in which this community flourishes through your love and your attention, and most of all, your presence. As we share tithes and love offerings, we do so in a spirit of gratitude. And we place ourselves in the center of the flow 
of that which we call the presence of infinite abundance. You don't have bulletins, but most of you know the words. I give joyfully and easily, for God is my source, and abundance is my nature. And so it is. You're going to do music? Sure. Will you? Yeah. Do something. Thank you. Well, thank you for for your love and more gifts untold and shelter from the cold when I'm feeling sad or lonely let me know I'm not the only one who's ever been here thank you for for your gifts and more that's what I thank you for Through all my noise, you've given me the choice. No, I complain. I sometimes bout the cold rain. You pick me up so I can listen for a while. To just the things that I've been missing in my life. Thank you for, for your gifts and more. That's what I thank you for. Thank you for. Thank you for. Thank you for. For your gifts and more. That's what I thank you Thank you, everyone. People. She's she's a big girl. Hi, Sophie. Hi, Sophie. There you go. We bless our kids. Sophie spends a lot of her life with him which can't be easy for you, <laughs> Sophie. We, we understand. He sings. He's, he sings a lot. During, war during warm-up, she said, didn't she say this to me? You're going to play that song again? Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. Uh. It, takes, it <laughs> takes children to know what's true, I tell you. Let's share our blessing. Oh, of course. Okay, you're going to get the whole hit. This is it. Okay. Child, children of light, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you just the way you are, and we do. <laughs> she's, so, she's so shy, I know, so shy and so inhibited. Good morning. Good morning. Will you let everybody know that our next kid night is going to be on the 20th? 20th, can I wait until next week? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's do our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you for being here this morning online, in person. Thank you for your loving presence in the world. We bow to you. We bow to you. We see and behold the divinity of you in and through each and every moment of your divine existence. As we sing our peace song, may we know it to be so. Please stand, join hands. It's like a puzzle. How quickly can you do this, right? <laughs> let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was given to me. Oh, let's create more. And 
Oh.